Right from the start, I would say it's just been the breadth of different involvements. And over the years, I've done all kinds of sports, music, and the school's really fostered developing those skills. I ended up going all the way through the Rotary School's Young Musician of the Year to the final. As my research project in the sick form, I ended up looking into positioning systems. And I was actually um, inspired by a past per student, because that's where all the great ideas come from. Marcus, as a student in the upper sixth, it's an important year for you with exams and university applications, and you're the head of school, otherwise known as head boy. What's that been like? It's been a really great opportunity. And whilst we're still busy, now that we've reached the top of the school, I'm really loving the opportunity to be able to give back. And over my years at the school, all those things that I've noticed and thought, oh, why is it this way? Being able to have my say and see whether I can make it better for the for the younger years. And it's been really exciting too in all the things I do, have such a easy way to tell the people who can really m make a difference about that. Um, so yes, it's been a really valuable experience so far. So you've been at the school since you were three years old, 15 years basically of your life. When you look back on that, what difference do you think it's made to you having your whole education at the first? Right from the start, I would say it's just been the breadth of different involvements that I've really thrown myself into. And each time I've explored something new, not getting too single-minded onto that thing. And over the years, I've done all kinds of sports, music, and the school's really fostered developing those skills, but trying to help me keep um, becoming a rounded person and teaching me the skills such as public speaking and soft skills that I can learn from those things along the way, maybe without me even realising. You mentioned music there. Now, I know that you play the saxophone and you've been very successful playing the saxophone. Please don't be too modest. Tell me a bit about what you've been doing. I've um, done lots of music competitions over the last couple of years as a way that I like to express in performance all the musical skills that I've been um, learning. And one competition that I actually ended up doing after just a local um, village competition, I ended up going all the way through the Rotary School's Young Musician of the Year to the final, where I got to play against people from all across the country. And it was just such a great day being able to play my heart out for 13 minutes and then hear what some really um, talented judges had to say on my music. And I find music a really great way to learn both the skills of determination and resilience in keeping the practice going, but also in performance and how to get across your expression in that music. And I think it has so many parallels to in normal life when you're trying to get someone to know your meaning when you're speaking. So it's been a really valuable experience for me. You talk about the commitment to your practicing there and I imagine that you've had to practice an awful lot to get to that standard what kind of commitment has it involved from you? Uh, so I've been learning from a reasonably young age but I've still tried to keep it in balance and never play for too long I mean clearly it does take quite a commitment over time but I would say if you really enjoy it it should feel like something that you enjoy and then it will naturally over time you'll realize wait I've actually become quite good at it and then you can just start to enjoy all the amazing possibilities that come from that. And has that been a really nice balance for you with your academic work? Yes, so I've really loved being able to go into school each day and know it's not just the lessons that I've got to look forward to. At lunchtime, I might have one of my groups with my friends, which I see as just a way to relax and do something slightly different. Or after school, I might have the orchestra. And again, it's just a way that I find both to enjoy myself but to have other things to look forward to. I'd like to come on to talk about your Rouse Award and the research that you did um, in the field of physics. Please can you tell me a little bit about it? I started to find myself drawn to physics over the last couple of years and one as my research project in the sixth form I ended up looking into positioning systems because I came across a couple of articles and I was actually um, inspired by a past per student because that's where all the great ideas come from. And um, 
I looked at how GPS can't give you a position if you're underground. So I looked at potential alternative ways to find where you are um, if you're, say, in a mine or in an in indoor location. And I actually did an experiment collecting muons, which are subatomic particles, to try and determine if a positioning system using these particles that come from space might be viable. And in the end, it perhaps won't be your device that you're going to get sold in the future, but it's really important to look at this. And for certain niche applications, who knows, it might that research potentially be applied to make some positioning for mines. I might see you on Jack Dragon's Den one day. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Currently, the costs might be a bit high, though. So is it physics that you want to take on further to university now that you've got this real interest and passion in this field? Yes, so up until quite recently, I really didn't know what I wanted to go into at university because I still couldn't even decide between sciences or the humanities. And what actually um, started to make up my mind was a school um, lead physics lectures that we go to at Cambridge University and whole group goes. And I started to see, find um, the extension opportunities and kind of what you actually end up doing in uni really exciting. And speaking with some older students at the um, meals that were run after these lectures, I discovered that physics at university is really exciting as well as just perhaps the classic um, engineering subject, which a lot of my friends have ended up going into. And yes, so I then discovered that I really liked being able to work out why things work and the cause and effect, being able to explain all the phenomena that go on around me. And from there, it's led on to all these research projects. And yes. When you were a child growing up, were you always that boy that would ask why? Why, why, why? Why does this happen, Mum? Why does this happen, Dad? I have always been a child who likes to question things, but it always came in class when we were doing GCSE um, subject. And I would always find the question that the teacher didn't want a student to ask because they had to go with the, the answer of wait till A levels for that one. And I think that's what really excited me to keep it going. But up until even now, I would have loved to do many other subjects. And I think that's why the school's so great, because I really do love all the subjects. Your curiosity for learning really comes across. Um, now, another area that you've been involved in as a head of school has been the anti-bullying ambassadors. We didn't have those kind of things when I was at school. So what, what is that? So the anti-bullying team is a group of people who give tutorials and assemblies around the school to help um, raise awareness about becoming a bystander and targeting bullying actively, making sure that our school has no place for any negative comments or even subtle leaving out of people or any unkind actions. So as a group, um, we give lots of different sessions, especially to the younger students. And this both helps them to talk amongst themselves. We're not necessarily teaching them what to do. It's more getting them to think about situations that they've already been in and what they might have done better or what they did well, um, calling someone out for saying something mean and just small things. And actually, we've got Anti-Bullying Week coming up, which is a really great um, week in the school where everyone can get involved in activities and just fun things that bring people together in different ways, but all with the theme of reminding people to just be kind to one another. It's great that you've been able to take on a leadership role that's actually really making a difference. I've loved being able to work with so many of the different year groups, getting to know people who I might not have known before and seeing them both develop their own leadership skills in having to give a daunting assembly to the younger years, but then working with them, sharing views. And at the end of the day, even that is making the school a happier place. What's the one thing you'll take away from being the head of school when you look back on it, do you think? With this position of responsibility, many people come and talk to me. And actually, those conversations that you don't think that you're going to get can give you new ideas because everyone has such valuable things to say. And in representing everyone's views, you actually end up with a much better end product. That makes a lot of sense. 
Now, we always end our podcast asking our guests if they have some words of wisdom or maybe a different philosophy that they live by that they could share with others. What would you share? I would say simply to always give it a go. If something comes along, don't just say, no, I'm busy. Just try it. Even if you think it's something really weird that you'd never do again, by doing all those things, you never know what you'll find. You might become really good at it, you might really enjoy it, or you might never do it again. But if you don't try, you'll never find it. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you.